Hi there, and welcome to ATX Underground, the show about anything Austin. I'm Sabrina Ritchie, and I'll be your host for this next hour. So today's guest is Jared Aja, the CEO of A-Town Productions. Uh, I want to thank him for coming on our show today. It's no problem. a pleasure. Absolutely. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to know about your latest projects that are coming up. I got a bunch of cool projects coming up. Um, cool thing is I got corporate projects, I got entertainment projects coming up. Uh, right now we're working on some documentaries. Uh, we got a short film coming out this year. Um, I'm also working on a new interesting type of visual. It's a cross-platform um, project and it's a set of music videos mixed with narrative acting in between. And it's uh, just you know cross-platform music visual mini drama series uh, for a, a entertainment artists. But we're actually with that one, we're um, we'll be finished in the next couple months, and then we're going on a 30-city theater tour Very uh, cool. with that one. So I'm excited for that. Um, we'll be showcasing a lot of uh, that project um, and a couple other projects that will be showcased that I did uh, on that 30-city uh, tour. Um, another project I have going right now is we're doing some work with the city of Austin, um, which are just some short little clips and videos promoting different types of, uh, you know, movements and prevalent topics coming up in the city right now. Very cool. Yeah, so a bunch of different stuff. Very, uh... Diverse. That's, yes. So, you know, trying it's to nice keep our to hands spread. It's nice to hear that, to have stuff local mm -hmm. and to hear that exciting things are coming to Austin. No doubt. And I'm trying to, you know, keep jumping into those more exciting things uh, as time progresses. But for now, we're, we're definitely happy. Very cool. That's definitely why we're, like, we started this show. So we can have, like, everybody know uh, what's coming into town and yeah. what's going to be happening. I love it. You know, just driving downtown and you'll see production trucks, you know, just on the side of the road with a little four or five man crew and lights. And it's just like every day I'm always seeing productions being done. And that gives me motivation and excitement. It's just like, man, there's there's work being done on a daily basis here in our city. And so for people like myself, filmmakers, we just got to figure out how to tap into that. And it's mm -hmm. doable. And so that's the exciting thing. Yeah, I actually had a guest. Uh Say something about that, and he was. He also had the same opinion that it like makes him very excited to see, you know, Definitely. like trucks and people filming and Heck stuff yeah. like that. Because then is. one day you're the guy with the truck and the, yeah. the crew out there, you know, and it's like, yes, exactly. That's right. <laughs> uh, so everybody tends to have like I guess lessons and learns along the way. Uh, about how to make their uh, projects better. Mm -hmm. So how would you put it in your own words of uh, what makes you a better filmmaker? Better filmmaker. Man, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that it takes to be a good filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways to be a better filmmaker, in my experience, is the lesson of, the little things matter. Um, the small details, the devils in the details. Yeah. Um, you know, that stray piece of hair that, you know, no one decided to address or that that object in the frame that was crooked and it just throws everything off that nobody wanted to address. It's the little things or a camera setting. You know, um, you know the exposure wasn't right or the focus. I mean, that's my pet peeve is yeah. like, if you're gonna set up a shot and it's not even in focus, <laughs> like slap you know it's like that was yeah. what are you doing you need kind of you know. like a bit of like wasted time absolutely because then you can't even use that shop so um the biggest lesson for me has been the devils in the details pay attention don't let anything like if you miss it on accident then so be it you yeah. know as a director on set you know there's a million things that we have to think about at the same time um so yeah devils in the details pay attention I definitely have to agree with that. Like me being an artist myself, uh, I draw okay. and paint and stuff, and I love doing detailed work. And you like can't the have little, a one-eyed yeah. character. You know, you got to put both eyes in there. You yeah. can't leave a hairless character. Exactly. <laughs> or like uh, if you're wanting to do like a background, especially mm. like if you mess up on like a certain, especially the perspective. Oh my okay. gosh. 
they drill that into your sure, head. Sure, sure. I'm pretty sure they also do that with filmmaking too. It's mm -hmm. probably a little bit easier with like realistic, you know. Sure, sure. Set but it's the same concept. If something's yeah. off, then you need to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you exactly. don't, then it's like I guess that has to do with more of like a personal, yeah, not defect, but characteristic. Uh, well, especially, as a, from the I creators. guess if you have to like reshoot the same one or okay. like redo scenes. I guess that would like be a big issue, huh? If you oh, had something big time! You know, um, the industry or the area that that uh, applies to is like sitcoms, TV shows, mm -hmm. um, even like product mm -hmm. photography and stuff, or like these commercials that we do. It's like you got to hit the same routine perfectly so that you can get different angles, and unless you're shooting with two or three cameras. Yeah. But um, yeah, the devil's in the details. <laughs> Pay attention. So uh, you're like talking about. Or one of us was talking about learning, uh, like paying attention to detail. Yeah. Uh, so with that learning process, do you f uh, do you teach film? Do you? Uh, okay. So like yes, I do. Um, I've been fortunate enough to so knowledge and information and train um, you know young children in the art of filmmaking. Um, I teamed up with a local uh, nonprofit organization called Lupe Arte. And um, they set up uh, after school programs and summer programs for children in, through the um, Austin Independent School District mm -hmm. um, to take these classes. So I've been doing that. I teach at three different elementary schools. And you know, each of my classes has like eight to 13 little kids in there. And uh, man, I bring cameras and we, I teach them about exposures and framing and focus and movie theory or film theory and you know, how to set up shots. And, progressions of movements and it's awesome to see these kids when I walk into these schools they're like Jared what up we're high five <laughs> like we're good working with the camera today and um, you know some of these kids are really artistic and yeah. if and if I wasn't there or if Lupe Arte wasn't there or some of these programs weren't there to feed that passion or that hunger for creativity or the, the arts um, you know what would these kids end up doing they would get involved with other stuff that's not as productive yeah um, you know and, and children are so mendable and so important to our future um, it really gr brings me great joy to just see an impact we might be teaching the next Steven Spielberg or Quentin Tarantino <laughs> seriously exactly. you know some of these kids have real creativity so I'm definitely excited to be doing that and um, we're also looking to start opening up uh, my own summer camp my Very film cool. summer camp um, so there's a lot of things in the works, but uh, we're definitely excited to play a part in teaching our future generations. Very nice. I personally love that because uh, I actually went to a school that was art-based. Okay. And like, I actually kind of wish that they had more schools like that because definitely. to me, I personally think that like people who have an artistic mind, they tend to learn differently Abs than and, like And you know, others. I'm one of those as well. Yeah. So like, I, I absolutely love the school. Not to mention that, like, at an art-based high school, when I was going, mm -hmm. they're more open and like the teachers pay more like attention sure. and more detail, and it's like they actually cared about the students, which I personally loved yes. because then you didn't feel like another face in the crowd. And it's not all about so, standardized testing yeah. and you know stuff that's kind of mm -hmm. irrelevant to a development of a child in yeah. his own unique path because um, no one's the same. Not everyone's gonna go get a degree and go work mm -hmm. in an office or a cubicle. Yeah. Um, you know, those things are great, but for people like us, that path wasn't in my cards. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. it just wasn't even an option <laughs> for me. So, um, yeah, yeah we're just making a difference one, one, one child at a time. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Because our children are the future. Most it's definitely. Like you know, I have two kids. I have a two-year-old and a uh, five-month-old daughter, and Man, it's so important the, what these kids are learning mm -hmm. and what these kids are, are intaking. Yeah. Because uh, it really will shape their future. And, uh, it really does. Like, children are basically like sponges. Like, right. people don't realize how smart they are. Mm -hmm. And then, like, somebody will say something or do something and they'll see the kid do it and they're like, Where'd you learn that from? That's right. It's because Learned they it from just you. <laughs> suck it all up and it's like, yeah. yeah, they're they're little sponges. They, and that's they why it's a, important to you know worry about what you're teaching them and yep. what they're learning. Exactly. Yeah. Knowledge now, is everything. It, it, knowledge is you know knowledge is power. You know the mm -hmm. use of knowledge is power. Um, but once again, you know I just I feel good because I'm actively participating in the f film community by 
creating content for myself, for other uh, entities, brands, musicians. And then we're also teaching, you know? So I'm, I'm like, we're, we're giving some of the craft away. I'm producing the craft for other people that need to use it as a sales tool mm -hmm. or something else. And then I'm also using that craft to, uh, you know, propel my own ideas and my own projects uh, out into the world. And so, you know, it's just, we're actively participating in the film community here in Austin, Texas. And I'm just very grateful for all the support and, uh, you know, relationships that we've built along the way because a lot of cool things are happening in the city and with Aton Productions and, you know, myself, Jared Ages, so. Very cool. Uh, so I know you were talking about how, like, making, you know, teaching kids mm -hmm. to turn it into a job. So uh, I was wondering, when did you realize that this was not just a hobby, like, that you could take it further into, like, as a paying, you know, job that you'll love to do. Yeah. Um, it's been a, you know, it hasn't been a simple process like, oh, today I'm just going to be a filmmaker and then that's yeah. what it is. You know, it's like, like everybody, I'm not exempt from, you know, having to go work jobs or having to do odd jobs or having to provide and, you yeah. know, like just for my own life and my family's life. Um, so, I've gone through a series of, you know, I used to manage a, a, a landscaping supply yard and I pretty much drove heavy machinery and picked up rocks for a living. And I hated it. You know, it was good money and I yeah. was, you know, climbing the corporate ladder or whatever, but that was just a side filler. And like, you know, we were talking earlier, you got to use moments and, and situations like that to fund and, you know, to equip you to pursue your real passion, which for me, you know, is filmmaking. Um, so I did that. I was able to use that transition to get into the filmmaking. Um, and then when I learned when it wasn't a, a, just a hobby for me anymore is when I started, you know, bringing in enough money to pay my bills. I was like, oh man, this, this ain't a hobby no more. We <laughs> yeah, can, we can do like something. Yeah, that a really good feeling. Absolutely, you know, because now you know, I'm, a big, I'm big on uh, taking control of my own destiny and, you know, if, if it's supposed to be, it's up to me. Uh, and a lot of those self-empowerment type of, of ideologies. But, um, you know, just putting a strategy together, figuring it out, figuring out what I want to do. And, you know, it's, um, I read a book called uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things he talks about is having a definite purpose, a definite plan of where you want to be. You know, it's like, for me, I'm, I have so many things I want to do and I'm, I'm able to do so many things. Um, it's like the, the biggest question for me is, well, which one are you going to do first or which one are you going to you know, yeah. pursue? And so sometimes when you have uh, things like that, you know, you can just walk in circles forever. Like, am I going to do this? Am I going to do this? And it's like you, you kind of go at a bunch of things a little bit. And for me, it really changed. And I saw, I started seeing the biggest results was when I decided, no, this is what I'm going to do. There yeah. ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care who says what, what happens. Um, I'm pursuing this. And, uh, you know, for me, that was the filmmaking and, and owning my own company and as a freelancer and uh, that whole smorgasbord of, of pursuing film. And, uh, you know, and that's what I said, def definite purpose. I knew where I needed to be. My actions and my brain just kind of filled in the blanks. And uh, now I'm here getting interviewed as an award-winning filmmaker. <laughs> Um, you know, and just spreading the word, you know, of just like I'm actively participating and playing an active role in the film community. And I tell other people, you know, that are aspiring uh, filmmakers and artists, don't give up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just keep going and um, eventually you will create content and people will have no choice but to respect it. Um, and that's the, the winning combination right there. I would definitely say it's a very respectable job. Like. I know, like, I've talked to quite a few people about this. I, and I probably sound very redundant, but uh, a lot of people really don't know, like, all the mechanics that go behind making a film. Sure. And, like, I personally think because I have a mom who's in the same industry, so <laughs> I've, I've seen a few of the the niches and glitches and yeah. glamour and glitter and everything in between. 
it, it's it's a tough job, especially when you're trying to balance between having like like paying for like your house and home mm -hmm. and everything that requires you to live in a normal society. Yeah. <laughs> Which but, no one can escape from. Yes. But then, like, there's also that, like, passion of doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, I think, personally, it's very worth it to go after your dream. And, like, even though, like, there's some sacrifices, like, and you're having to, like, work long hours. Sure. It's very much worth it. Like, me personally, per se, like, I do another job besides this one. But it, it requires, like, it helps me do this now and like I'm it almost like yeah. gives you the burn and the passion fire mm -hmm. that you need it's like when I was you know working at that job it's just like yeah I would be there 10 hours 12 hours a day in the sun just mm -hmm. thinking about filmmaking you know yeah. it's like man it I wish like I was a, on a video it shoot it with puts lights like a and fire in your belly absolutely and you're like you know what I'm gonna figure a way to get out of this situation and get me into the situation that I want to be in yeah. And, um, you know, and that's why, you know, people don't get too mad at your, you know, current situation. If you're working a job or you're doing something that you currently don't want to do, but it's a necessity, you know, keep doing it because that situation will lay the path for you to get where you need to go. Very cool. Uh, so do you like, since we're talking about Pat, mm -hmm. the passion of filmmaking, do you have anything to show? Like I've heard. Yeah. Um, so we got um, a new TV show being. Um, we just got done shooting our twelfth episode. It's called Five One Two Studios Live. I teamed up with a great guy named Omar Vallejo here in town. Um, he has a studio called Five One Two Studios. So me and him teamed up and we created this show that promotes local bands, bars, and businesses. And so we put together twelve episodes of the hottest bands, bars, and featured businesses. And uh, you know this will be a little clip of it. It's the first five minutes. Um, I was able to create this show, you know, and this is like our pilot season. But this will just be the first episode. You guys check it out, man. Let us know. And uh, 512 Studios Live .com. You can see episodes, commercials, and also find out information on how to be featured as a band, business, or restaurant or bar. So uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. Hey folks, welcome to 512 Studios Live here in Austin, Texas. We'll be showcasing some of Austin's local bands, bars, and businesses. This is our first episode, so we're excited to bring you some fresh live entertainment. If you want to check out more episodes or watch this episode again, you can find us online at 512studioslive.com. Should be scrolling right here. Today on the show, we have the new offenders. Good guys, great band with a cool southern rock sound. I know you guys will dig it, so check it out. Hey, we're the New Offenders from Houston, Texas. We're going to play some of our Southern rock and roll for you. My name's Hunter. I play guitar and I sing. I'm Dustin. I play drums. I'm T. Ray Porch, and I play lead guitar and sing. Jason Nelson, bass.
broken records on the wall Hung up since last fall I think it's time you called it quits Cause I've done my time enough to know That you can't take back what those people So don't believe everything that you're told Break free from the mold This one before At least a thousand people Sang it a thousand times or more It's grown tired at best I think it's about time That we all gave it a rest Cause I took my time up to go that you can't take back what those people so don't believe everything that you're told break free from the mold. We're here. <laughs> yep. And it seems like uh, we're having a background change constantly. Very Maybe nice. the next film will have another one. <laughs> so uh, you were talking about your films, and uh, I was curious. Uh, so you're talking about films and projects, and I was wondering what type of films that, or film societies are you involved in? Oh, OK. Um, you know, there's a lot of great societies or, and communities, film communities here in, in town. Um, the Austin Film Society is a great one. Um, you know, the Texas Film Commission has a lot of great resources. Um, you know, those are the two main. There's some other ones out there. But, um, you know, there's just Google it. You know, it's like yeah. if, if you're looking to be a part of some or if you're looking for resources. I mean, I, I just love the city because they provide so many resources. Um, you know, I was looking at some numbers a couple weeks ago, and it was the projections of the whole nation's um, spending budget or grant budget for what they give the state or what the state allows for spending or funding for film projects. Um, my numbers might be, they're not too way off, but they're, I'll round them up. But um, LA had like, 400, 500 million dollars that they granted for film funding for local projects. Um, New York was like 800 million. And Texas was at like 95 million dollars. Wow. So 95 million dollars between, I think, 2012, 2013 to 2015, where we're at now, you know, 95, do 95 million dollars has been given to local filmmakers to produce music videos, commercials, short films, feature films, um, corporate material. Um, you know, so the opportunities are out there. And like I was saying, you just have to know where you're trying to get. Yeah. And then certain avenues or resources will pop up if you do the, you know, due do, do, do diligence uh, for researching that and finding that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, once again, I love being in this state and in this city for the filmmaking and for my career path. 
because just of the amount of resources available. And you know, not even just resources from uh, fil uh, funding, but also you know gear and, and also um, personnel like staff or crew. Texas, Austin, Texas has some great uh, crew members that you know work big budget uh, you know projects, but they're here locally, so you can you know make a, a nice relationship and get some of that big budget look on your local small budget uh, productions, which is very helpful. Um, yes, I bet. You know because there's a lot that goes into it, and if you can find the right people and the right resources to get the right equipment to get the looks that you're trying to get you know you can really make some moves in this industry uh, instead of just hoping and trying to you know make a little short film it's like you could like when I think of you know people say let's make a short film I'm thinking still major yeah you know production <laughs> but that's possible without that you know hundred thousand million dollars plus uh, budget yeah, very true. Um, so it's just been very, I've been very grateful for those opportunities here and the people that I've, you know, teamed up with. I definitely say that I give great kudos <laughs> to uh, people who are able to pull all of that together with such a low budget or sure. like have no income at the mo like at the very beginning mm -hmm. until like it actually gets bigger. Yeah. Like I definitely give people praise for that because. I know it's not easy finding like talent no, or No, it's not or putting together yeah. resources to get equipment, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like we did that with the TV show that you guys just saw, 512 Studios Live. Yeah. You know, me and Omar, we had this idea. We were like Omar's like, I want to make a show. I want to have bands. I have some crazy sketches on there. I mean, the sketches that you guys didn't see in the show, but we got um, belly dancers telling the weather. We have 70-year-old <laughs> tap dancers. We have all types of odd talents. Um, you know, we have different segments that showcase the, or the featured businesses, whatever. But we just put all that together and we didn't have a lot of resources because, you know, we're going to use this as the pilot to um, get some funding or investing yeah. or, or whatever to make the future seasons. Um, so that was like the most recent um, experience I had of just like bootstrapping and really putting something together. I mean, we shot full 12 episodes. So that's 12 bands featured 12 businesses mm -hmm. and then also featured 12 uh, you know bars slash restaurants wow and uh, you know it was cool we were working and you know anything is doable there are no rules um, if you want something go out there and make it happen but we wanted food sponsorships because I love eating even though I'm skinny yes I love <laughs> eating and so you know like every filming we had uh, restaurants don't not donate but sponsor meals Very um, cool. so every time we were shooting we had meals and so we were just we were getting participation from the people that we wanted it from, but we were also giving um, something to them of value, which was you know promotion and a chance to be on a on a local show that is really backed by some amazing uh, people. You know Omar Vallejo and um, you know the, the studios and mm -hmm. myself were Eight Town Productions and all the other bands that were involved. Um, so yeah, you know, come up with an idea, go out there and make it happen. I mean, people will respond if you put it out there. Exactly. You just gotta believe in yourself and, and not just, seem, yeah. you know, like, oh, I have an idea and I wanna do a TV show. No, 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 ATX Underground, we're making a TV show. <laughs> you know, A-Town exactly. Productions, we're making TV shows. There is no idea. It's like, we're doers. And uh, I think that's the biggest trait people just need to catch on yep. in a hole. Just we're do. We're reaching out for that spider web and climbing our way up towards the sky. That's right, that's right. Trying to push it out there and promote other people as we're promoting ourselves. That's I right. mean, we just want to give everybody of Austin, like, you know, the go to of like, hey, we're here. Like, I mean, come on. It's like, show yourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why we're making this TV show so that's everybody right. knows. And people need to step up to the yeah. plate and believe in themselves and be like, yeah, you know, I need to be on that show mm -hmm. too. I got something to talk about. Exactly. It's like, be big and proud about it. I mean, it's your talent, it's your dream, it's it's everything. It's mm -hmm. like, come talk about it. Like, it, it's, it helps when, like, I mean, like, you made your show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, similar to ours, it helps, you know, boost others into making their dreams come true. Definitely. Expe you know, and they're all stepping stones. You know, it's yeah. like, we're making this TV show, the we're making this TV show so that one day we can pitch another TV show. 
And it's like, you know, with you guys, the ATX Underground might be a stepping stone to something even bigger and better that you didn't even realize, but, you know, people like people who make things happen. And exactly. so this is just a great testimony for other people, future investors or whatever, contributors, to just see that we make things happen. Very cool. Um, you know, talking about all these different clips and projects I'm working on, I, uh, I got another set of clips that I brought for you guys. Um, this one is a, it's like a two and a half minute reel. It's my 2014 uh, entertainment reel. And then I have uh, another thing after that with some more updated clips um, that you guys can see and check out all the work that we've been doing, working with some amazing talent, businesses, artists, musicians. Um, you know, so check it out, guys, and we'll see you back in a little bit. Uh, so with all the talk that we were discussing uh, okay. about getting our getting dreams and promoting each other, uh, what was your success that contributed to all of it? Or what? Yeah. Okay. So what contributed to my success? Yeah. Um, you know, to my overall success, what contributed to it, and um, you know, is just never giving up. You know, there, I've been through a lot of uh, experiences and situations that most creative uh, artisans can relate to, which is the struggle of how to develop a consistent stream of revenue through your artistic expression to pay bills, live your life, not stress, have an openness of mind to, you know, um, to, to stay creative and to stay thinking about the future and how to propel your gift to, you know, bring in uh, results for you. Um, so, the, you know, no matter what you go through, the biggest thing is just don't give up. You know, if that's what you want to do, do it. And uh, just don't stop. Don't let no one tell you different. Don't believe anyone when they tell you different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that would be the biggest thing. Otherwise, it doesn't matter, you know, what methods or strategies you practice if you give up then it was like all for nothing yeah um so the biggest thing is just don't give up and you know i'm constantly learning failing forward you know i, I never had the opportunity to go to a formal film school or anything like that so a lot of it for me is failing forward 
And that's why, uh, you know, I, anytime I can jump on a project that's different from my comfort zone, mm -hmm. you know, whether a documentary, a little commercial, or a short film, or something that stretches my limits as a, as a creator, I love I loved those experiences because it makes me more well-rounded, yeah. um, you know, which the more well-rounded you are, the more equipped you are mentally, you know, the bigger chance that you have of not giving up because you can handle what comes your way. Exactly. And it's just like building those small confidence boosters, excuse me, to, uh, you know, just be confident enough to, to, number one, don't shy away from an opportunity that comes your way. Um, I've had opportunities come my way that were technically not my expertise or my strong suit, but I believed in myself enough to where I didn't shy away from it. I said, you know what? I got you. I can do that. Uh, I came up with a little plan, submitted it. I fooled them, you know, but uh, I didn't fool nobody because I follow through on my word. I keep it simple, but I deliver strong. Yeah. And uh, that's been a really big thing that I've tried to practice. And uh, it's worked out so far so well. Well, that's <laughs> you know? good to know. Absolutely. I definitely realized that, like, the success seems so much more sweeter when, like, there's failure, <laughs> failure involved. I yes, guess. failure. Because, I mean, like... Uh, because then you get to taste the yeah. disappointment of not making it. And then for me, I always go into the self-reflective um, mindset of like, okay, why did I not succeed? Why did, not this, why did this not go well? Yeah. And then I just, you know, I start lining it out. It's like you put enough, enough uh, thought into it, you'll eventually find out what was wrong. And, um, you know, yeah, be able you to definitely grow from it. Change it, absolutely. And if like, you don't, you're messing up. If you fail, yeah. if you're having a hard time right now, it's like, Think about it, like, what brought me to this point? What actions, what, what was the lack of actions that brought me to this point? And you can exactly. do that for personal reasons and even creative, you know, projects. It all goes hand in hand. That's why I love the quote of, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Sure. Because, I mean, like, if you don't have that, like, that down moment, then it doesn't make you grow into something stronger, something better, something like Because yeah. nobody more. starts out perfect. Exactly. You know, it's like everyone started on their first film or their mm -hmm. first project. And I'm telling you what, an, uh, uh, some talent was late, a camera malfunctioned, uh, somebody dropped something, you know, someone didn't show up with something. And it's just like, ah, you know, next to I'm making sure that I have the equipment with me, or I'm making sure that I pick up the camera operator. And so, yeah. you know, no one's late. And it's like, as a director, you start to realize which things you just have to, for yourself, make sure happen. You know, and it's like, you just can't leave anything up to chance or to, up to other people. Yeah. Uh, so, like, with chance and everything, do you believe that, like, where you live and what you've gone through and everything, do you believe that influences what you've created mm -hmm. and what you produce and so on and so forth? I definitely, I know that it affects uh, how and what I make. You know, living in this city of Austin, Texas, the capital, live music capital of the world, um, there is an endless amount of musical talent that we can work with. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody has a guitar, everybody has a beat machine, everybody has a, a, a EP, and um, you know, and, and that's been a great way for me to learn. I've, I've I think I, I tallied it up, I think we worked with over seven, I think it was like 78 or 79 artists. Wow. Different artists, fully original productions. Um, you know, but I mean, we're up you know, there and we're, we're about to probably break 100 now um very soon so all of those for me those were my that was my college courses mm -hmm. i would you know book a client and i would set up a project i would write a shot list i'd come up with you know from location scouting to treatment writing to uh production scheduling to um you know invoicing and contracts and release forms to itineraries mm -hmm. um to call sheets to just all those little things it's like each one of those artists that I worked with, each one of those music videos or productions that I did, it was just like a little stepping stone of like, up oh, now I need this, up oh, now I need this, and I was just gaining these, um, you know, tools, resources, 
and even methods and strategies within my own mind of how to effectively make a, a production happen. Uh, on that note, real quick, I, you know, doing this for, uh, having Aton Productions for nine years, we've worked with big crews, we've worked with little crews, and, uh, you know, a couple years ago, a few years ago, we were, uh, my business model was hiring very talented, creative production people to bring my production level mm -hmm. or the production's levels up um, to a level that I couldn't do by myself. And so going through that process, I was able to learn some key things off some key people, um, pick up new tips and tricks. And through that process, I now have acquired a system and a flow for my productions that allows me to get a level of quality and look and format that would usually take a three to five man team. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, I've been in my own metamorphosis state to get to that, you know, filmmaker level, uh, that cinematic filmmaker level without having to hire 10 to 20 people mm -hmm. to like hold this, hold this, hold this, hold that, say that. You know, it's like, yeah. I'm just out there with like, like this, you know, just <laughs> making it happen. Holding everything. I'm holding and saying, <laughs> and then they go. <laughs> um, so that was just like, a, just something I wanted to bring up. You know, you can learn. It is okay to hire out to learn from other people. Yeah. Maybe you don't have a college professor to go and, you know, or a, 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 cl a class instructor to talk to or get advice from. Hire someone, a professional, and then let him be your class instructor for a few productions, you know? Exactly. And then just take what you get from it and keep moving and finding your own unique style um, yeah. as a creator. I definitely like working with people who are better than me at what I do. Definitely. Or like in other fields that I don't know how to do so well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because then that like builds onto you, like you feed off of them and you learn and like grow and I love it. Yeah. Like some people like might think like, aren't you like jealous of like them being so much better at what you, I'm like, no. I, I see mean, those I'm people don't get it. They better. don't get it. And yeah. there's people that think like, oh, I can't work with him because he's better than me or I, I might be jealous. Well, those yeah. are like petty feelings. You know, yeah. it's like you need to have an open mind and understand how little you actually know. Like me, as much as I know, I know nothing. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's still so many things that I need to learn and so many things that I need to keep practicing. Um, it's definitely a, a growing experience. Like no matter what, uh, how much you think you know, you don't know everything. Absolutely. And those people that think they do know everything, that's how you, you know, Yeah. you will soon find out yes. <laughs> that you don't. And you know, the people with those cocky attitudes are usually the ones that think they know everything. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's nothing you can tell them. So you just got to let them do their own thing and split paths and keep looking for other like-minded people like yourself that just want to grow and develop into something bigger and better than what they currently are. Exactly. I actually had a teacher who taught, who actually taught another student uh, that was in the same classroom as me. He handed her uh, a cup and he had a teapot that he would have during class okay. and she was holding it and he just kept pouring and pouring and pouring and she was freaking out because it was starting to like overflow yeah. and he just kept pouring and it like spilled over and she's like ah and he's like well what does that teach you and she's like it spilled everywhere and he's like no if you have a cup that's already full then how are you supposed to learn put any more yeah. in yeah absolutely exactly. so if we think we know everything how are we going to teach it how are you going to learn anything um so do we have another clip to play? Is that what we're moving into? From what I've heard from the people behind the scenes, <laughs> there should be, yes. Nice, okay. So um, <laughs> this next clip is gonna be another compilation of clips that we've done throughout the years. Very um, cool. Yeah, so you know, just another mix of work that we've been doing for the, the state and the, the city of Austin. State Excited of Texas, to city see of that. Austin. Yeah. Some more promotion, yes. So check it out, guys. Tell us what you think.
suspicion pushing down on me you know oh and got that all right very cool uh so i was actually curious about part of that video towards the end okay which part uh, the one where they were all kind of getting together at the hall and oh yeah, doing the, the, the city hall. Yeah. Um, so that was an amazing um, event that we were able to capture. We teamed up with a company called the Tech Ranch. Um, it's a great co-creative workspace here in town, and um, they offer great resources to uh, startup companies. But anyways, they put together this event for South by Southwest Interactive to where I think it was like over 30 startup companies from around the world came into town uh, to present their pitch to angel uh, investors and also venture capitalists. And uh, they were looking for partnerships and investments and stuff like that. But it was amazing. We got to interview and, and film all these different startup companies from around the world. We were at City Hall, we were at the state capitol. Um, and it was just amazing, you know, and that's one of the things, like, we'll go from shooting a rap music video to we're filming the mayor in City Hall, talking Very about cool. Texas education or filming startup companies from around the world. Um, you know, it's just keeping that diversity in there. But that's what that was, <laughs> and that was, a, that was a fun event to cover. That looked really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of wish I was there right. since it looked... Uh, to be a little bit international, right? It was, uh, absolutely. It was the international startup pitches uh, extravaganza. Very cool, very <laughs> cool. Uh, so I was actually curious as in to, so you were talking about all your events and everything, yes. especially this last one. Uh, where do we find you online for um, our viewers? For sure, there's tons of places. Um, we're on every social network site, but um, it's gonna be at Atom Production for any social media, or we have atownproduction.com, uh, which is our website. You can find uh, more videos, information on how to contact us. Uh, and we are really, and I am looking to work with creative and talented artists and also businesses that would like to create sales tools to help them make more money, get new clients, and expose their brand to uh, amounts of people that have never been uh, exposed to before. So once again, we're very easy to work with. We know what we're doing. We know what needs to be done, and we know how it's supposed to be done. Um, you know, so we're just looking for people that want to invest into themselves because we have a whole set of skills and resources available um, to make small to big budget productions happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, once again, we're just grateful for the opportunities to come and talk about it with people like yourself and ATX Underground. Uh, it's been very awesome to be here. I've been treated very well. And, uh, I'm glad to hear you. Absolutely. You know, besides that one thing, when you get a little push in the back, you know, we got over that. But, it's like, uh, oh. <laughs> look at that kick under the table. It's um, like, shh, don't no, say that. No, everything's been wonderful. And, you know, there's a lot of great stuff coming up. And we're just excited to keep doing what we love. Very cool. So uh, you were talking about productions and stuff. I was curious about... Do you have anything in your current future? Yeah. We got some cool stuff in the future. Um, where to start? Um, you know, I'm uh, doing all of those and showing all those clips that we previously just showed. I'm really pursuing making some more TV shows. Um, I have two uh, TV pilots that I'm going to be shooting in the next couple months. Um, Couple more music videos. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about these music videos because um, our budgets are getting to where we need them to be. So I'm going to be able to do some things creatively that I haven't been able to do before. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, you know, definitely going to win some more awards this year with those. Um, and I'm working on a documentary um, that is also sponsored by the city, um, but it's about. Um, Families that have children with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. After high school, Texas funding and the Texas programs dramatically decrease. And so these families, you know, have a very hard time supporting, you know, the, this lifestyle that these, these children need help with. Mm -hmm. um, so we're creating a documentary to expose some of the need for it and just to kind of just give some of the background information. So that's very cool and, and, and uh, you know, powerful in my mind. Yeah. Um, so we got the TV shows, the documentary. I'm coming out with a new short film this year that we just got done shooting, and so I'm editing that right now. It's called Home. 
Um, and it's about a girl that gets kidnapped by some uh, in a, uh, home terrorist. Special police come, uh, rescue the girl, save the day, and everything's wonderful. So that would be cool. We got real guns and things are blowing up in there. So awesome. that was a fun project. Love to see things yeah, blow yeah, up yeah. bits. Pretty soon you will see. <laughs> Very cool. So sadly, that's all the time we have today. Uh, I would really like to thank our special guest, hey, Jared Hey, no problem. Aja, thank you, thank you. Because it was really awesome seeing your videos and you talking about all the projects that will be coming to Austin. Nice. Yes. So I also want to thank our guests for tuning in today at ATX Underground. We also have a website if you want to catch us online. It would also... Uh, lead you to our very many uh, websites that we have. So our website is atxunderground.com. So please check us out, and thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. <laughs> Great stuff. Def